If you would, turn in your hymnals to page 12. <clears throat> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. May we pray? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. There's a passage in Matthew's Gospel that talks about if, as you're on the way to the altar with your gifts, and we believe those gifts represented the, the wine and the bread that was brought forward at the time of communion, you find that there's something in your heart against your brother, you are to stop. You're not to take those gifts to the altar. You instead are to go and to be reconciled with your brother before you continue on. And that became the, the basis for what we call the passing of the peace. And so I encourage you now to stand and to greet one another in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Yeah, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Bill. <laughs> peace be with you. Continue with me in the prayer of great thanksgiving as it's found on page 13. If you'll notice on pages 13 and 14, you sort of have a, a, an outline of it, and I had a lot of words that aren't in there. Uh, but you, you, will, you will catch on the, when it's time for you to join in at the various parts. Uh, the Methodist Church has a, uh, a wide variety of what we call Great Thanksgivings. And so I use a different one for different seasons and so forth. And that's why they sort of just give the outline in there so that the pastor can fill in with stuff that's appropriate for the season or the day. And so hear these words. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, our Alpha and Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with us. Uh, to be your people Israel, and spoke through the prophets and the teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting his death, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. 
He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink it. This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be renewed by them and we might proclaim his word throughout the world. As the grain and the grapes once dispersed in the fields are now united on this table in bread and wine, so may we and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As I said earlier, the table is prepared, and Christ invites everyone who wants to receive these elements to come and to receive them this morning. If the communion stewards would come forward, we will set up two stations, one on this wall and one on that wall, and you'll have a chance to go to the outer edges and come down the aisle and receive the body and blood, and then you may go back to your seats, or you may, if you wish, kneel at the altar for a time of prayer. So if the stewards would come forward. For those to receive uh, anointing, uh, if you will just stop in the middle on your way back to your pew, I'll anoint you with oil. So I invite you now to come and to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
anyone that needs the elements brought to them.